the forge has gone quiet, the bellows blow no more. The forge has gone quiet, the smiths have gone home. Only fading embers remain, and my hearth grows cold. One kiss from you to rekindle it all. Welcome back to Queen of Embers, episodes 31 and well, 32, let's be honest. Yeah, Both of them. Game. Under Game Master Daniel Fox. These are the players, the cultists, the people who made Zweihander, Mangosh, and Queen of Embers great. We hit a new goal! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the snacks, everybody. We, what, what did we hit? What was our snack goal again? It was 150 per month, and so now we are able to... Uh, Right snacks at the table, and so everyone having to uh, chip in on their own. So thank you, patrons, right. for doing that. For Cheers, us. everybody! Cheers. Thank you all thank so you much all. for your patronage, guys. Seriously, Cheers. it means a lot. We love cheeses. Thank you. Yeah, it's Adam and delicious. Adam and uh, Mike are in charge of uh, not yeah. only the Patreon but uh, running the weekly posts, doing all the post work to the videos and podcasts. So thank you both for yeah. your contributions. Everybody else around the table too for playing. Once again, it's. If we didn't have, if it wasn't us coming together and playing this game, we wouldn't have the patrons that we have. So, yep. who wouldn't have uh, you, you hate? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> or you just be honest. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Thank you guys. Um, but we also had another important goal today too, or I guess yesterday. We we're having a giveaway, which oh, yeah. by the time you all are listening to this, the giveaways are already done. We'll probably do another one. <laughs> but we hit one hundred ninety-one dollars. Uh, right now, we're actually at uh, two hundred five. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, we broke two hundred. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. That was on the way here. Holy oh, shit. shit. We got two of five. Hey, two hundred dollars. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, well, hopefully we'll get. Clo- we're getting pretty close. To probably to that. What's that next goal at? The next goal is two fifty, and that's where we get character sheets of all of us, uh, illustrated by Dan Mandich. That's right, and we'll Ooh. release them exclusively to patrons. So you'll have illustrated character sheets for this. And those will eventually make their way to the market in the actual Queen of Embers book, but patrons will get that months and months in advance because oh, Queen yeah. of Embers isn't even in the product roadmap until fall of 2021. Who knows? Maybe you already have them. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, it's a good point. Um, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> That's right. So, yeah, illustrations will be done by Dan Mandich. Uh, He does all the illustrations for the Zweihander line for Mangash Zweihander, uh, the Zweihander Player's Handbook, which will be in market officially in December. Yep. We will make our, we will have, uh, we'll have our big splash at Pax Unplugged, where we're going to have our first booth for Zweihander underneath the Andrews McMillan Universal banner. Um, and our first book we'll bring to bear is the Player's Handbook, uh, which you all can learn more about on Twitter. And my shilling is over. Let's play some fucking games. All right. All right. So uh, we have initiative already determined. Uh, let's jump right in. Maybe we can do a quick recap. Where what happened last game session? Does anybody remember? Uh, somebody knocked somebody out. Knocked them out. Ow! I did. What happened? Uh, well, we were at uh, Tallow's house. Right. <laughs> the candle maker's name, who is Tallow. Yeah. James Tallow. <laughs> James Tallow. <laughs> candle look plain. So uh, <laughs> we found out that, of course, he's making uh, candles out of uh, out of dead people. He sees dead people or makes candles out of them, one of the two. Mm-hmm. So uh, he keeps claiming somebody's coming over, somebody's coming over. Well, somebody does come over, and it's the fair semi game that <clears throat> gang that nobody at this table knows, but now you guys will know, uh, one of my main contacts is the one who leads that game. Sylvia Corvino. So, I didn't know that when I just ran out the door and just blasted somebody. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I talked to, I talked, I talked him off that ledge and um, used, a, used some, rep, some reputation to squelch a fight. That's right. Francisco. 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 And the exchange was made, and the Dufresne left Candlebook Lane unharmed, 
in return uh, took James Tallow to Brigandine and exposed his crimes. Yep. Yep. Burned down his house. Oh yeah, burned down his house. That's the important thing. <laughs> we Get didn't with that. No, we didn't. No, burn. that's right. Oh, no. you're right. You didn't because it was too. That's right. No, we got six corruption for burning down his house. No, but we we we, we didn't. Right. Oh, quote. Yeah, a you didn't follow. burn it, but it burned down. Yeah, we. Yeah, we weren't uh, there. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a candle maker's house. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. you players did burn it down, but in store you decided not to expose it. You were the ones who burned it. Right. Yeah. So that's right. So what happened after that? Not with Hexen's turn. Yeah, we did. Yeah. And he said basically. The Baroness is ready to meet us. In two like, days. After we burned down the house in her city. <laughs> I, I sorry. Mean, sorry I had to go there. Details. Details. Um, <laughs> and then he gave us like her whole inner circle that would probably be there that we'd be dealing with. He gave us a bunch of names. Lots of names. Uh, I've got them all written down. The Barrister, Rosaria, the artist, Alan Selfie. God damn it. <laughs> Captain Wolfgang, Captain Tenerfield, Sammy Newhouse, and Heron Bigley. Krung Bigley. Krung? Krung Bigley. Police well, hasn't got an accent. She doesn't know how to do it. <laughs> yeah, so there could be a number of people who would be amid her her company. Anything else that happened uh, with uh, Hexen's turn? Either conversations? You didn't really tell us much. How about that development with Warren Rhodes? <laughs> Warren told us a lot. <laughs> Warren, yeah, Warren kind of spilled his guts. Yeah. yeah Tello didn't tell us shit, but Warren told us he went insane. I, Warren, Warren didn't go insane. <laughs> his... She's acting a little possessed. Ooh, alter ego? I don't know what's got over. a hold of him. <laughs> <laughs> is it possible Warren really is crazy? <clears throat> is it possible? Well, Mechanically, whatever. <laughs> whatever it is, Warren has been seeming awfully competent lately. Yes, and well spoken. <laughs> <laughs> He's sus AF. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> doesn't sound doesn't sound like a a redneck from our neck of the woods. A growl stater. So the next day comes, and you come downstairs uh, at from the Dire Straits, where you'd been staying. Um, you know today is not a holy day. Uh, neither was the night before. That's why you're able to find... Um, Paxton Sir was able to find you. I thought it was, and that's why he can't meet with us again. Yeah. Is that true? After talking to the Baroness. Yeah, you said oh, it was. Oh, you're right. He'll just simply meet... He'll simply send a messenger. You're, right. you're absolutely right. That's right. Because I was like, damn it. Because <laughs> I was... High Holy Days likes to be looking at the stars. That's right. In the clouds. Insert random holiday. Yeah. So it's a, it's a pretty busy day, despite the fact that it's the latter part of autumn. You suspect the markets are probably going to close once the first snows come. You still have some number of weeks, but the air is getting bitterly cold. You kind of cut. You came here to Durindal during this time of the season where it was late autumn, and now it's... Or sorry, mid autumn. Now it's almost late autumn. It's kind of like that kind of seems a quick turn, where the rain is getting cold and uh, people are starting to bundle up, including yourself, mufflers and mittens and high collars in your gambeson, and fur on the inside, leather on the outside, fur on the inside. I agree. I'm going somewhere with this. Are we restored to imperiled or uh, I believe you all are unhindered. We all raised. Yes, that is true. Save for those who have a case of the sniffles. It's Anybody over. under the weather? It's over. Like, I think it is. I, think. I have Slightly. a cold, which is <laughs> minus three peril threshold. That's right. So you're fine. You want me to take a look I at it? <clears throat> look at what? You're, sh- you're sniffling? Oh. I can uh, write you a little prescription for it. Just a, just a dose of laudanum. <laughs> Help chase away the symptoms. Uh, yeah, take take a look. Sure. You got a dose of laudanum? Uh, nope. Actually, I uh, may. Let me check. <laughs> yeah, to treat a cold, you will need laudanum. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some robotess and just knock yourself. That's right. Mm, no, nope. don't have any. Water. I, I think you'd be lo, 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 <laughs> tripping, robo yeah. tripping, Rod. Yeah, robo. Lobo lo, lo, tripping, lobo lo, lo, tripping. You just lobo. Seems <laughs> seems to me. Daylo. I have to. <laughs> yeah, I'll add a lot of. So. Sorry about that. Uh, I got one now. <clears throat> I got one left, and uh, I don't think I want to use it for a cold. No. He sneezes. <laughs> Yeah. You feel your call. You feel feverish and weak. Like it's not like flu-like symptoms, but it's, it's influenza. I mean, you just yeah. not influenza. My fault. It's just a common cold. You feel your eyes or your nose is runny. You're just kind of feeling a little achy. You worry it may turn into something worse, which it always can turn into something worse. But how many days you have left on your uh, caught a cold? Uh, four. Four days. Okay, cool. I don't know, Terry. You're looking a little greener around the gills. Your call, though. His nose is dry from <clears throat> blowing it so often on his sleeve. Oh, I might just oh, sorry, he's a blood of sleeve. He blows it like a farmer, like <gasps> one finger over the nostril. It's not rocket. rocket. Yeah, it's a farmer. <laughs> yeah. The farmer's handkerchief, as they call it, or or in this case, the the Ravadian handkerchief. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You might want to <clears throat> take care of that before we go see Her Grace. Are we seeing her today? I don't. I don't believe so. Was supposed to be. Uh, he was supposed to speak with her today and send the messenger tomorrow. I thought. Well. But I would ask Elise. She's. Well, yeah. If he asked me, that thing will run its course in a day or two. Well. She's, all right. Stick yourself in bed and. Uh, take a day off. No, that's, you see, that's not a bed rest type of thing. Just, how many days? It just goes. How much, how much trouble can we get in one day? A uh, lot. We could get in a lot of trouble, and that's why I'm not wanting to use me one and only laudanum. Your hair still smells a little bit like smoke. <laughs> Full case of the sniffles. While they're arguing amongst themselves, Elisa's going to slip to the side and take her laudanum. Okay. <laughs> oh, I wanted to hand you the book as well. <laughs> yeah, the ledger, just in case you want to. Well, she's going to go read it uh, and possibly do some detecting while she happens to be under You will need time to go through the ledgers. That, and I think there was another book that we had from uh, the college. So to com- I've already got it. So to complete the ledger, it will take ten days. Sorry, yeah, ten days, that's right. That's fine, um, but uh, since I am under the influence of laudanum, I would like to try to uh, see what I can do with True Detective. Okay, uh, I'm sure to take a corruption for your laudanum. 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 Oh, laudanum. And your chance is going to be challenging. I am currently moderately wounded now. Challenging? Yeah. 10%, and that's on investigate, right? No, scrutinize. Scrutiny. 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 62 is my chance, so 52 is a 10% challenging. <laughs> 66 ain't gonna do nothing. Critical Ooh. fire. Oh, oh no. no. Yeah, mm-hmm. oh, was like, well, I think it becomes painfully aware to you that uh, your constant abuse of laudanum is clearly having deteriorating effects on your mind as you will spend most of this day cordoned uh, in the room uh, <laughs> and you will in, in or the first part of the day at least and you will suffer uh, three, uh, nine, two, twelve, 12 mental peril it's the yellow king it's the yellow king and from st- uh, that's not noble savage is only if it's from toughness oh, that's right I am in peril alright Oh no! So I am. you're you're feeling uh, one. a little out of sorts <clears throat> for that first part of the day. Out in the markets, a lutist, oh, no, I a ain't. flautist, is playing with a lutist. Hmm. What is so this? Because we have a day to kill. You do. <clears throat> Lisa just complains about her elbow, and Carl's back in the bed. <laughs> you want me to treat that? Yeah, no, sure. There's nothing for you to treat. Mm. She is simply under the uh, having the heavy effects of laudanum. You've seen this before. Well, she has an injury. Yeah, I still am moderately. Mm. Uh, you took a dose of laudanum. You go up to the light. I went. No, I went up one from that. Oh, I was <laughs> seriously. I seem to recall you took a laudanum 
last game session, too. Because I was grievously at that point. I think well, that when you take this dose, a lot of it has the opposite effects. It's been less than 24 hours. I didn't take one in the last 24 hours. Either. That was two days. Well, when did you take one? When did you take one last? Um, because you didn't you try to uncover secrets last game session too? No, no, I didn't use it last. I used it. Um, the other book that's been. When he was, I used it when. Uh, where is it? When we went to go meet with Amadeus. Right around then is when I okay. used it. That would have been so that a been few two. days ago. Yeah. So okay, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. But when did you suffer that? When did that injury happen? That moderate uh, injury. Well, it happened that uh, the day before the Amadeus, so about four days ago. But remember, it took two days for me to get the surgery, and it was 14 days to recover. Okay. So I'm at 12 days. Oh, so. Oh, there's nothing you can do, Warren. Okay. There's literally nothing you I didn't, can do. I, I didn't know yeah. whether I could, I could oh, treat you. Oh, she can't go up. damage threshold, I can't go up either. You can go up damage threshold. Absolutely, you can. That's what I was saying. That's, that's, that's Once what your injury is treated, it must, it must mend on its own. The right, other, right. I'll still have this, but he I just wanted to treat the, the yeah. damage. Yeah. Yeah. So you're lightly wounded now? Uh, if he succeeds. Oh, if you succeed. Okay, so you got to roll. Okay. She's a bit fidgety. Suffice to say, the, the she is deep in, uh, in in the effects of the deliriant. Uh, yeah. Your chances will be hard. Okay, so that's going to be a forty-four percent chance to succeed. I uh, hold still here. <laughs> rip fail and rip my arm. And off. I rolled a forty-two success. Nice. Oh. Life, the meaning. So you want to step up the damage condition track? Yes. Sure you want to keep here. that? You want to re-roll? Uh, no. Forty-four. <laughs> Forty-four. Forty-four. Fifty-five. <laughs> that's what I asked for. Fifty-five. Spin four two points. No. Uh, okay. Um, so yeah, she's kind of not feeling so hot, but for the rest of you, uh, while she's kind of doing this and Warren is doing that, you do have some time to kill uh, until tomorrow when you expect the messenger to come. And likely the messenger will come during the day, you would imagine. In fairness, likely receives nobody during the evening. You are, remember, you are in dire straits, and in capital D, dire straits, <laughs> hotel, uh, in um, Slum Row, hiding out, laying low, knowing that you've uh, irked or piqued the interest of varying groups in the city. And I kind of just want to sit around the bar and just listen to rumors, mm -hmm. basically just kind of catch up what's going on in the town, you know, just... Have yeah, a chit chat, but yeah, with folk chit chat, rip the rumor. You know, you can absolutely do that. There are a lot of people who come in and out of yeah. the dire straits, even in the middle of the day. There's a lot, a lot to do. There's still some people who are talking about, you know, the reek. Still, you know, like the reek is gone, but my son's still sick. Oh, I'm still feeling a bit wheezy from it. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and roll a rumor test. What's your social class? I am a burger. Okay, probably. People here are lowborn, so your test will be a uh, challenging rumor test. Okay. So, 43. That's an 01. Whoa, Whoa critical success. Take that crit success. That's right. Interestingly enough, here is what you hear. There is a man who apparently works for the Baroness who, who has... Uh, Purchased uh, an aerostat, as the person calls it, a zeppelin that crashed from the air into the Gelman and Zox foundry. He purchased it some number of weeks ago, and uh, not only that, there have been people putting where he's kind of stored it or trying to restore it. Uh, there have been people kind of uh, bowing and and. Uh, Essentially worshiping at the foot of it, hmm. laying, uh, making petty donations like bits of grain or food or milk, pouring it before the prow of this thing. Is so somewhere in being like the, the, the zeppelin? Yeah, they're saying it's somewhere outside South Gate. Or sorry, West Gate. My apologies. Hmm. Strangest thing. Yeah, so I kind of sit on that one and just chew on it for a little while, but 
you know, I'll mention it to the others eventually. Sure. Terwin, Alistair, and um, Banneker, who would you like to attend to today? <coughs> any of you have any plans for, th- for things to do? I can amuse myself. <coughs> talking to or nothing. Probably find you some laudanum so you don't have to worry about uh, talking about your last one so damn much. If you don't mind, that'd be wonderful. I'm trying to save money because, well, I think we need to race, so. I consider it your birthday. <laughs> right. You purchase this uh, direct when you Shake someone down in front of the coin. Will you? I'll just pay for it. Okay, straight up hands. So, Laud no, the poor do- her does is four crowns. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. It's Medicine's expensive. expensive. Yeah. It's worth not having to be the last one. I have one. It's not uh, cheap to figure things out. Yeah, I'll <laughs> buy one and then I'll spend the rest of the day getting drunk and deliver it after I deliver it back to it. Fair enough. <laughs> I never say I never did nothing for you. What of yourself, Banneker? <clears throat> well, we didn't really find out much about uh, the Vipers, so mm-hmm. we don't have a lot to go on. No, not yet. What did we find out about the Vipers? They're extorting the people of uh, the Burrow here. And so those fellows he was talking to, they ain't like us, I say. No, no. Those are Why don't we go and see if we can uh, find some more information on the Vipers, eh? We'll go to go to some of the local businesses and see if we can... See if they will talk about being extorted? Well, you see, that's the thing. I don't think they will. And I think if they do, we just put them in danger. Maybe if we could uh, hang out at a business and see if any of the vipers just come by to collect. Do you know what the vipers look like? No. But usually you see money going to businesses. If you see money coming out of the business, then that'd be something to pay attention to. That's a good point. I mean, then maybe we could follow them. Do just reconnaissance, reconnaissance alone. Oh, it'd, be, it'd be a first for us, I know. Actually, Alistair and I would have the most successful reconnaissance. You're right, I was just trying to, you know. It be seems funny, to be, so. um, seems to be in your leading the group that <laughs> civilly is, is broken. Yeah, it's true. But, but yes, uh, you, how about I ask, you know, maybe Grimby has got a, a good idea on uh, who else is being extorted. Maybe he's being extorted. I wouldn't think so in this place. Oh, you never know. More saw-tooth men in this place than I, I think I've seen in my entire life. You never know. Maybe he's even a part of the Vipers. It's like Warren and Alistair had babies. <laughs> Often. <laughs> well, that just ain't right. You it. Why can't we have babies, Mom? Well, <laughs> it just ain't this natural order of things, you know. I think you have to talk politics. With you. <laughs> That's not what I was meaning. Yeah, was Mechanically. <laughs> this is beside the point. <laughs> I don't think anyone was talking about race, and I don't think anyone was talking about making it. Yes, just simply making it. Why you always gotta go there? Always take offense to things I say. You're an offensive feller. I don't mean to be. I, I don't just, either. But yes, this, this could this could work. Do you think this is a viable plan? Listen, we need to. I believe Alistair and somebody else is going to take a day off. You need a day off. <clears throat> you know, drinking and spitting doesn't sound like a bad idea. 
Every day need be filled with adventure and setting fires to the city. That's and getting a good yourself idea, in trouble. We've had a lot of these. So <laughs> well, deter- well deserved downtime, maybe. That's what I said. Drinking and spitting. You know, I mean, it's not a bad. It's, it couldn't make a bad day for once. Listen, We've had a lot, and you know, I, I have to say one thing, boss. If we really want this meeting to go well, maybe we shouldn't kick the vipers. So you're saying you'd like to have the day off? I'm saying, fine. I'll, I'll, I will fall on that sword and say that I want the day off. Alistair raises a pitcher and two mugs he has, <laughs> one of them already full. Ah, and ah, Banneker will join man. him that day as they will reminisce about what has happened over the past three weeks you've been in the city. And they talk about the weather. This is what you do when idle talk. Talk about the weather in the local Blitzball League. <laughs> ah, it's one thing I can get behind is some Blitzball talk. <laughs> and Terwin, whatever yourself. Uh, Terwin is going to uh, walk about to see what businesses there are mm-hmm. along Slum Rail. And just keep his eyes and ears open, but really don't go poking any nests by asking questions. Right. Just, just taking things in. Simply walking the city will require a folklore test. This test will be easy for you. Okay. Folklore easy will be 63. And a 53 will succeed. You get a good sense for kind of what's around here on Slum Row. Most are ramshackle businesses. You're surprised many of them can even stay open. They don't really have a lot of foot traffic. The place in Slum Row, I mean, it, it, it seems, it doesn't seem dangerous. It just seems a lot of people out here are kind of bootstrappers. You know, they're kind of having to live with what they have or collecting what they can off the Bastards River. There's a lot of, like, petty junk sellers and um, scrap men around here. Uh, you s- tend to see the, um, what are those people who collect the bodies they get called? Uh, not the Montezuma well Collective, but um, body, 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 body collectors. Collectors. yeah, a few of those are kind of trafficking into the street with a wagon full of the dead. Um, you see a few houses that have been cordoned off with a big red X on it for pestilence. Mm-hmm. All of Slum Row is just kind of a place where the destitute and the poor and those who cannot afford to live anywhere else will come. And you find out most buildings are abandoned. But there's a lively amount of traffic around where these businesses are, in particular the dire straits of Lovelock Bridge. It appears to be kind of some sort of outdoor market of a sort where... Boats kind of pull up along the jetty and the, the silty shore and lash together. They kind of, there are people barking out for what, what wares they have to sell. They've found further upriver or downriver and just kind of commencing with traffic. But uh, actual businesses, few and far between. Right. Uh, Taryn will <clears throat> kind of hang out on Love Luck Bridge for a little while, bang on the bridge, you know, start to wonder about them locks. Weighing down that bridge like go so many nights ago. <laughs> and uh, he'll kinda just keep an eye on the comings and goings of the of the the river as that was how they were smuggling things in and out. Um, and uh, he'll spend a little bit more time doing that and then if he doesn't really notice anything, he'll uh, uh, go back inside and have a drink with yeah. the fellows. Roll D6 for your chaos die. Woo! I like that. The bridge collapses. <laughs> there are oh too many locks on there. He was right. <laughs> the bridge collapsed. Ooh, six. Okay, you may collapsed. make a standard skullduggery test. It is not agility based, it is perception based. Perception based, okay. I am not trained in it. When uh, you discover any sort of nefarious means are happening on the river, okay. a successful test will tell. Alright, I have not trained in it, so it's flip to fail. The standard will be 41 based off of perception. Okay. And uh, 85 won't do it. Can I re-roll that? You got a fortune plot. I mean, you had to roll a thing to get a thing. Yeah. You want to do yeah. it. Hey, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> oh, it's just me rolling, you know. I mean, you always critically I'll fail. I'll take that misfortune point. Thank yeah. you. All right, here we go. Hey, uh, 64 still won't do it. Uh, Damn. Well, uh, you will discover nothing. You have an inkling something may be going on, but if it's yeah. happening, it's happening right beneath your nose. And <laughs> your eyes are turned toward the horizon where it's happening down below on the, on the river. Um, the day will turn to night. 
um, and you will settle back into the dire straits. That night, um, already, Alistair is drunk. Uh, can we assume also that um, that uh, Banneker is drunk? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm probably quick to bed. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you all are <clears throat> deep in your cups. And uh, remember, any time that you drink, you may automatically just choose to be drunk. I mean, there's no reason to... If you want to just if you if you want to try withstanding being drunk is a different story, but no. uh, whenever you drink, obviously once you're drunk, you will suffer some peril due to it. Um, yeah. So we will go to intoxication. Elisa uh, is going to purchase a lot of them, by the way. So it's one corruption for drinking uh, or getting drunk, rather, I should say. Yeah. Uh, three, uh, uh, six, seven, eight. It's nine physical peril. I think Harper looks at them drinking, remembering the last time, just like, uh, I don't know. No, I'm good. Like PTSD a little bit. Yes, yeah, so remember, whenever you become intoxicated, you suffer 3d10 plus 3 physical peril. Uh, you remain intoxicated for 6 hours, you gain 1 corruption, and plus 3 damage threshold. So, you know, it's good for bar fights. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's oh meant God. to be that way! Uh, no. Um, he's a musician. He's the worst. I don't know why we're playing the flute. It's always that flute bastard in here. He's a flautist. Flautist. Flout. The, di- the Dire Straits, this place seems more homey to you than the Cloak Room. I mean, the Cloak Room probably be a pretty dangerous place when uh, the Salt Peterman drug Harper out from his bed and attempted to kidnap him and murder you in the streets. Fortunately, you've had no run-ins here. Now, the people who are here are mostly kind of transient swordsmen or swords folk, uh, stevedores, people who are basically traveling through Durendal. This is where you find a, you'd probably be able to get work, where you uh, where, where, where you where you sell sell swords, professional sell swords. But uh, this place kind of is very welcoming in that sense. Even though people carry weapons, it doesn't appear to be a place where you'd have to, you feel you have to draw it. There's kind of a sense of understanding that if you're if you're carrying a weapon on your belt, you're inviting danger. And if everybody's wearing weapons on their belts, it's pretty much assumed that, you know, this could turn really bad. It's not just a matter of like, I challenge you to a duel. No, it's a it's a fight to the death. So everyone <laughs> is pretty chill. <laughs> Nonetheless, you were joined late that evening by Warren Rhodes, who looks a bit in disarray, but um, back to his former self, so to speak. Is one eye is a little bit bigger than the other one. Let's die. One eye is dilated. No, I'm drinking. All right, pour one for me. Taryn will pour one, and uh, he's continuing to go easy with his. I, I hope everyone has enjoyed their day off. To the sun's day, you hear people say as they raise their cups. Hey. 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 Whatever that is. I'm going to take the hunk of bread that I have and I'm going to fling it at the flautas. <laughs> Shut up! Bring a lutus on! Oh, I bugger yourself, he says as he <laughs> continues playing his, flou- his flute. It's always a t- flout. Flute man here. Play some free burn. Yes, I agree. <laughs> well, tomorrow's the day, huh? One where we see the, the lady and all her. Uh, the moon, the stars, and. All the boys. And the sun. The boys of summer? What were we going to do? Oh, man. Oh, oh, the yeah. stars shining out of her ass. And, you know, those things. The fancy boss lady. Uh, these people. The bards have begun to gather on the second floor along the balustrade and have their hands kind of held together like a choir, like choir girls and are singing. This place has a pretty, pretty, uh, has a circuit of different entertainers and singers and musicians who pass in out of it. Thanks, Sirenscape, by the way, for, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah thanks, thanks, guys. Thanks it's really good. It is. I wasn't just making fun of the flute. It adds a lot of well, immersive elements. Because if you didn't like the flutist, you'd be a liar. <laughs> you'd get a liar. <laughs> I'd get a liar. Yeah, you'd get a liar. <laughs> well, make our money. Well, an interesting bit of information I found out today 
The yeah. sun and the moon and... Oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, that's tomorrow. Hell yeah. So, y'all remember hearing about that Zeppelin that crashed, right? A balloon? Yeah. Right. And that that, was, that uh, aero balloon or something. Profit was made or whatever. Right. How the uh, professor, he had built that thing and then it fell from the sky and killed a bunch of his students. But well, didn't he also kill the, the find the, the, the prophet, right? Prophet, right? That? Right. Yeah. I think the prophet came from that. Uh, well, apparently... Yeah, that's what they said. Well, apparently, someone has uh, purchased that wreckage. He's trying to restore that thing. And apparently, they're like, almost worshipping it. Like, <laughs> like, providing offerings and... Well, All kinds the, of crazy things. Two of the thirteen, then. It great. might have been. That would make sense. I mean, I, mean I don't, I don't know if it's true, but I heard it was a Baron's man. Well, no, he could have been. I'm saying the people dropping off offerings. Hey, the Baron's, the Baron's man. man. Which Baron? Well, what was the, the Baron? Sorry, the Baroness's man. Oh. The Baroness's man or worshiping man? They, I may, I'm, I'm, like I said, it's, it's just a weird rumor. So maybe I heard it wrong. I'm but, confused. Well, we, you're drunk, so that explains that. Well, let's go. Let's go see it. Let's go see it. Well, I don't know where it's at exactly. We can't, we can't go see it. That's, that's listen. Where this I... is something we can look out for afterwards. But I just wanted to. Well, what what else are we doing? Come on, let's you go. put disc two of place the PlayStation in to see it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm just putting the idea in the seat in your head so it can grow a bit, and then we can think about it. That's what Captain Spurs yeah, yeah. No, is. No, no, that's that's a good job. You, you did well, and I think we should follow up on it after we see the Baroness. Right. Uh, no, I, I I think you did good. Yeah. So it was a productive day of doing nothing by myself. It was very nice. So I had a day off for me. Uh, I still worked, but you know, didn't. Didn't do much. I walked about a bit. Just kept my ears and eyes uh, peeled. And uh, couldn't help but think that these vipers, they they operate on the river. And so I got a hunch I should be watching the river. I watched it, but I didn't really notice much. But I got this feeling. It's feeling that vipers are still using it. No offense, but you don't seem the type that would have the ear for that. And the nose? One of the two. <laughs> would you or, say? Or the eyes. <laughs> That's the one. Because he, uh, he, <laughs> he takes the, the fork he was using, to eat, or whatever utensil it is, and he taps his eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> would you say that you're hooked on a feeling? That you're oh, high you, on believing? Yeah, you use, you use hooks to fish. Right. Yeah. So that you got that that feeling hooked into you. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that was a stretch. <laughs> stretch. <laughs> well, <laughs> so just you know. If, so your your productive day was to figure out that nothing's happening, as far as you can tell. <laughs> nothing's happening, but you have a feeling yeah. that the pirates that operate on the river are operating on the river. Still. Yeah. Boss man, I got to say... I, I, I tell you, I, 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 I had a lot of feelings. You never believe me. I don't know if I believe you on that Well, one. you see, that's why he's in charge of this investigatory unit. Uh, <laughs> I get it. Here's the thing. Does this, does this, does this place have a, I don't know, a balcony or a porch or something that's overlooking the river? No. no. Why would they want to do that? It just mm-hmm. smells like fish and... and, and Clevatorian shit. There is an interview. Doesn't, view. doesn't it? <laughs> doesn't it smell like that anyway in here? No, it smells wonderful in this place. Mm-hmm. I love this place. Can we go outside and get some air? Oh. Lisa probably needs to. If she's coming down. So it was what I'm. I was going to recommend that we, you know, like maybe tomorrow or, or another day that we have downtime as we spend the day. Drinking and watching on said balcony or porch, but since they don't have one, 
Well, we could well, watch out the front door. I don't know if anyone has told you this, Chairwoman, but uh, the criminal element typically operates at night, so uh, you'd probably want to be doing it the other way around. Is that why you're also sleepy during the day? And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I thought of that too. We're privateers. <laughs> just look at, just look in the mirror. I thought, I thought of that too, but you know I sometimes if baby. you're good enough, it's best to do it during the day because people are suspecting you doing it at night. I'm not opposed to looking at night either. But, well, all right, all right, all right. Well, let's head to it. Well, we caught him. Being trying to enslave those kids at night. Well, yeah. that was during. So, do we want to, you know, just 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 keep this party going all night long? Yeah, I no. keep these beers uh, coming. No, 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 no. Witching, <laughs> witching hour. It's time to think about turning in. No, I'm turning in now. You guys aren't making any sense. Your productive day sounds like standing on a bridge and looking at the river and drinking. No, no, no. Alice has been looking at the bottom of his cup and refilling and looking at the bottom of his cup again, and Benner is refilling, and Benner is clearly hammered, and uh, Elisa is, 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 is kind of discombobulated. I never said it was productive. I said I kept productive. working. Doesn't mean I got anything done. Yep. Uh, it sounds like you got nothing done. That's right. Well, also, probably not good to do much tonight, because if we get fucked up, then we got to see the Baroness while we're fucked up. All right. You fucked up? Me? Yeah. No, I had maybe one and a half. You fucked up? No. You? I guess that sort of depends on what you need me to do. <clears throat> Listen, we, we can just spend a bit of time outside, enjoying the nice air. Oh shit, it's cold. You can see a collection of people kind of gathering inside the dire straits on the sun's day. These dark, swarthy looking fellows with uh, hair shaped like curly black triangles of boiled black leather. And the people in dire straits kind of step aside as they find themselves in a place that's probably where they sit all the time near the hearth. The entire bench is completely uh, abandoned. Uh, they make way for clearly who would be Ferrisemi, men and women. Looks like our friends have decided to join us. Wouldn't we look like the criminal element if we were hanging around on the bridge menacing at the water? Yeah. Maybe it's best we leave it alone. Yeah, boss. Around here, people you might gave not. me the day off, and I am taking it officially. Mm. <laughs> Let me get more popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> if you really want to observe, I'll join you. But it's a holy day. It's cold. It's dark. I don't know how much you're going to find. I'll spend enough time on that bridge. I don't want to be causing too much attention to ourselves. I think we should let it go for now. Alright. The sun's day will come. And the evening passes. And you all awaken the next day. Those who, um... Those who, um... Drink... Do not recover any peril. Whereas everybody else who did not, th sorry, those who are intoxicated do not recover from recovering your peril. Everybody else is recovered to um, 100. Nope. The next day comes. Wait, oh, actually, in, I do have a question. Persecution yes. complex. Cannot rest or recover without laudanum. I use laudanum that day. I'm assuming it does not count for the rest of that night. Sure, why not? Oh, it does. Yeah. Okay. Laudanum, I mean, laudanum, you can't use laudanum more than once a 24 hour period, so we can just assume that its okay. effects are helpful to you. And I did say I bought another dose. That's right. right. There is a. That morning, there is a. At your door. No. Uh, I'll get up and answer it. Come to go away. You come to the door and throw the latch, and there is this fellow who looks bleary-eyed. He's probably been up all night drinking. His breath smells of grog. Soom, young boy, dress to the nines. Well, I'm all sixes and sevens. 
is trying to rustle you from your bed. <laughs> Burps. Oh, me. Chest burns. I'll give him a brass penny and uh, thank him. Well, I'll you... put that one to good use, he says. He stumbles away. Uh huh. All right, you lot. Let's get ready. He's dressed to the nines. It's probably our invitation or our summons or whatever you want to call it. I'll put on my fashionable clothing. What are the rest of you? Uh... <clears throat> Never bought fancy clothing. Come as, I, cause I, come as I am. Dress, I come as you are. Yep. Any weaponry you'll take with you? These will be good. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll put on my clothes, too. Uh, put on military attire and bring my sword and shield. I'm debating leaving the Saul Peterman's gun here. There's some cleaning going on downstairs. The floors are being swept. The glasses are being gathered. And you can see this young page, perhaps... 12, 10 winters of best. Uh, he or she, you're not really sure, has a short kind of a bowl cut hair, like you'd imagine like a, like a Prince Valiant hair, like the bangs with the short hair on the back. And um, he is bright, bright eyed, but somebody is clearly coughing in the back kitchens as they're cleaning up this place from the night before. But this page is clearly dressed in these t- these, sm- these stockings, has these very small feet, and is wearing a brown and green doublet with a short cape over one arm. You say it's a... Good says! And you can't tell by the page's voice whether it's a boy or a girl. Master Hexenstone has sent me to call for you at the Baroness's palace. All right. Have you gathered your trappings? Yes. Are they installed here still? There are some still installed here, yeah. Then you intend to rest here for the night again. Unless otherwise... Do we, should we bring all of them with us? Master Hexenstone has, has asked if you wish to bed here for me to pay for the installment of your trappings another night. Thank you kindly. Yes. Well, thank him, I suppose. Yes. Either way. <laughs> we do. Sure, sure, Have sure. you stabled thy horse? Yeah. Just so. The little boy turns around up on his tiny little soft shoes and goes up to somebody at the bar and will pull forth a purse full of coin and lay I'll, it down. I'll look Grimby and I'll be like... <laughs> he. <laughs> Nuts. You know, I bet you... Bear Thy you. lodging has been paid for. She, or he, says as she tightens the little purse and puts <clears> it <throat> into her into her belt. Thank you. Thank you kindly. I bet she could bring my few with you all the way up to the Baroness's key. Shall we anon? Yeah, it might look better. It'd be fine. How do we greet right. everyone in the whole district, too? How would we, um, how do we greet you, Paige? Boy. Boy is fine. Sirrah? Alright, boy. Where is this? Where is this carriage? We should go to the palace. Tell me you already. I shall wait outside. She or he excuses themselves, closing the door behind them outside. The whole place smells of spilt beer, uh, smoke. There are dogs lapping up the remnants around the floor. A few people are passed out near the near the hearth. The the fire is died down completely to ash. The room is cold. Um, it's uh, someone's coughing in the back in the back room. Perhaps the launderer. Um, they're sweeping and cleaning up glasses and cups and plates. We should get a move on the same no place for a child. I'll saddle up Matthew. I'll uh, take that. You say I'll need to take the laudanum now in order for me cold you're not showing court. Yep. So I'll take it. Get the corruption. Oh. On corruption. Uh-huh. And now it'll just be high for court. <laughs> That's right. We'll be high court. Yeah. Lower court. Higher court. 
Absolutely. So you gather yourselves and you head outside. Is there anything else you wish to do? Final call? Oh, nope. I'm leaving my that. weapons here. Okay. I, was saying, I would like to be treated, but uh, I don't think we have time, so. Maybe do it when we get back. Okay. So. The page so, will. Is there, there is one thing I'd like to do. It's Alisa, too late now. Oh, well, then I'm not. Last call of last call. All right. So, the page will escort you into a part of Durindal, simply known as the Old City. Uh, the clean streets are lined with fine restaurants that are already busy at this time in the morning, including specialty shops, small corner theaters, and even a museum. The people who walk along here are either are beneath a parasol, wearing the latest, often very flamboyant fashions. In fact, you pass by parks and squares decorated with fountains and statues of figures of history of Durendal and Aglador, which kind of creates a, a feeling of spaciousness, whereas the rest of the city is very cramped and shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder dingy and dirty, particularly around Fadder Square. The uh, road seems to widen, leading you to Dauntonthorn Palace, as you well know the historical rulers of Durindal has been the Daunton Thorns for many generations. As you continue toward the old city, spires and turrets kind of reach out toward the skies, and stairs and walkways crisscross to connect decorated balconies between these buildings. There's dozens of elite soldiers standing on guard, brigandine, but dressed in, um, in finer armor. Mail, some in plate. It is cold, but... Uh, Nonetheless, as you can continue through the district, uh, you can smell flowers and lemon cakes and perfume in the air. It's about 10 a.m. in the morning at this point, um, late by the standards of the rest of the city, but early for you all as you tend to burn the mid oil and you burn it hot. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear the sounds of birds and of laughter and the distant sound of music somewhere coming from Within the, the within the old city, there is stone pillars and splashing fountains and rich drapery that adorns the thresholds of windows that uh, denote the opulence of these of these houses. In the air, taste of apple pie that seems to rest on every windowsill where every mum is awaiting her her uh, her her gentleman to return. I'll take a. Um, a vanilla orange too, if you wouldn't mind. Bubbly. We're dispensing with the pop real quick here. <clears throat> bubbly, bubbly. That's thanks right. again for it. Yeah, thanks, right. guys. Wee! Wee! Welcome to the part of the podcast where we enjoy your patron. That's right. <laughs> now for your sponsored message. <laughs> and now we'll chop in all these chips. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> no! Well, hold on. Oh, Nick, no. take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's take a quick break. Okay. 